This is Maud Flanders, loving wife of Ned, supportive mother of Rod and Todd, the judgmental neighbor of Marge, and the girl next door to Homer. Or at least she was up until her untimely death by t-shirt cannons. Ever since that fateful day, she somehow keeps finding a way back into the characters' lives, sometimes in flashback memories, sometimes in Halloween specials, and sometimes directly in their dreams. This is the history of Maud Flanders. Buckle up, because this is going to be a weird one. We've talked about characters with status quo changes, even ones who have died, but I can't think of any that are more defined by their status quo change more than Maud Flanders. She was someone we all sort of liked, but never really noticed that much until she was gone. So today we're going to look at both life and death. How much did Maud contribute to The Simpsons when she was alive, and how well did the writers deal with her death? Should they have even killed her off to begin with? That's the real question. As always, let's reset back to the beginning for the full perspective. I always think of Maude as part of the original Simpsons crew, since Ned Flanders and Helen Lovejoy were around back then, but Maude didn't show up until season 2 in Dead Putting Society. This was the first real Flanders Homer episode, so she was needed to show off how wholesome their household is and provide Ned some key advice. Pretty standard stuff. Then in Itchy and Scratchy and Marge, we get to see more of her moralistic side, joining Snu and along with Helen Lovejoy, taking their moral outrage to new levels. It sort of establishes Maud as the more extreme version of Marge. As corny and old-fashioned Marge can be, she will never be able to compete with Maud. This includes serving peanuts to Homer, especially the ones at the bottom. Early on, there was this weird thing with Homer and Maud, between this moment and in Dead Putting Society with Homer commenting on her butt. Obviously Homer is drunk right here, but these season 2 examples play into Homer's envious side, that deep down he wants everything that Ned has. Interestingly, they almost immediately back off this angle though. Maud plays a strictly supportive role in When Flanders Failed, offering that cursed wishbone and calling out to her husband at the finale. After this point, Maud goes into her shocked and singing phase of her career. Here she is shocked that Todd doesn't want his damn vegetables. Now let's sing to Unky Herb. Now let's sing to Homer. Now Ned serenades her. And, in the most shocking revelation in Simpsons history, discovering that Anne Landers is a boring old biddy. Starting in Marge and Chains, we get a more antagonistic version of Maude. How she spies on Marge in the bathroom, tells her to get out, and later regrets turning her back on her neighbor. She's becoming more outspokenly judgmental about others' behavior correcting Ned about the Bible, describing Homer's pants as awful, or cutting off jerk-ass Marge's evil sugar agenda. At the end of Bard of Darkness, she even admits that she was at Bible camp to learn to be more judgmental. To be fair, there are plenty of easy-going mod examples sprinkled in here too. It's not like she suddenly became another snarky, negative Helen Lovejoy type. But there's a tiny bit of edge to Maud's character when compared to her husband. If Ned's going to provide an out to save herself, oh, she'll jump all over that. After all, by surviving Bart's comment, she ensures that she'll be able to attend Lisa's wedding in the future. Anyway, it's mostly business as usual through the Oakley and Weinstein years. In Home Sweet Home Diddly Dum Doodly, we get super religious and judgmental Maud, and we hear about her love of unflavored ice cream. She's part of the Holy Rollers bowling team. She cries to Marge about her ordeal of drinking toilet water. Then in Season 8, we get outspoken Maud again. She participates in moral crusades in Bart After Dark, Homer vs. the 18th Amendment, and Grade School Confidential. She even accuses Lisa of murdering her brother. Maude just seemed to be in a combative mood in Season 8. Like she has that big argument with Ned because he won't unplug the phone, threatening to make him sleep on the lawn. And in the twisted world of Marge Simpson, she very quickly turns on Marge, calling her a wet blanket. It's pretty bad when Maude thinks you're lame. But overall, it's a refreshing take on her character, getting her away from the Flanders household and allowing her to fight fire with fire. Maud had a pretty good season 9 as well. It kind of feels like her final hurrah. In Trails of Horror 8, she comes up with the idea of gingerbread, C-H-I-L-D-R-E-N, for the witches. Then in Realty Bites, having to reel in Ned from buying every house that Marge shows them. And some more Maud sass in the season finale, becoming frustrated by all the ned splaining. But then season 10 comes along, and she pretty much fades into the background. A couple cutaways here or there, but she mostly just exists to set up Ned's punchlines. During season 11, Maude got a pretty significant visibility spike on the show. And as any reality TV fan could tell you, 
that's usually a bad sign for a minor character's longevity. Here she is doing a hokey fire safety play. Here she is worried about Ned, who is most certainly not dead. Here she is being lusted after by Homer, a real throwback to season two. She even sounds noticeably different. That sure is strange. I wonder why. Prior to season 11, Maggie Roswell, the voice actor for Maude, left the series over a pay dispute with Fox. Basically, her travel expenses to Los Angeles were increasing, and during negotiations, Fox offered her a $150 raise, a veritable pittance. A pittance! Instead of accepting the aforementioned pittance, Roswell quit the show. And instead of possibly revisiting the terms in the future, the show hired Marsha Mitzman Gavin to take over her roles and killed off Maude in the fan favorite episode, Alone Again, Natura Diddly. Here come the t-shirt cannons. I find the framing of Maude's death kind of fascinating in how upfront they are about what a minor supporting character she was. Like Reverend Lovejoy literally gives a speech outlining that perspective. And to be honest, this summation is pretty valid. I just went over her classic season appearances, and it's only a handful per year, most of them only one or two lines. And even her death in this episode isn't framed as a final spotlight moment for the character. She just randomly shows up and gets flown off the grandstand, it will normally be a disposable Act 1 set piece. But as random and disposable this set piece is, I would argue that this is one of the most important Simpsons moments in series history. It influenced so many episodes afterward, so many characters' relationships. They went out of their way to lay some of the blame at Homer's feet, that he instigated the accident and suddenly ducked out of the way. They go even further, describing how he parked in the emergency entrance, which blocked the ambulance. Spoiler warning, this is going to make things super weird later on in the series. In the short term, Maude's death obviously had huge implications on the Flanders family. Ned is no longer Homer's idealistic, happy-go-lucky neighbor, there's a streak of sadness there. Season 12's I'm Going to Praise Land centers around Ned's grieving process for his wife. That this is a man clearly having trouble coping, not getting the emotional support he needs. He's clearly not ready to date anyone, and is creeping out everyone around him. He builds an entire religious theme park in tribute to her, featuring lame rides and ghastly hallucinations. After Ned gets a better sense of closure, he finally tries dating again in earnest, leading to season 14's A Star is Born Again and his later marriage to Edna Krabappel. Maude's death resulted in an entire story arc for Ned, even though she doesn't actually appear in any of the episodes. In season 14, Maggie Roswell returns to the role as Ghost Maude in Trios of Horror 13, setting up three tales for the audience. This is a particularly fun appearance, as Roswell gets to play Maude really big and dynamic here, trying to deliver a big scare. She also appears in season 17 in a sweeter and more low-key role, as Heavenly Maude expresses her happiness that little Rod Flanders is growing up. Aww. Starting in season 20, the writers started taking advantage of flashback episodes as a means to bring Maude back. In Dangerous Curves, we see young Ned and Maude on their honeymoon, picking up Homer and Marge. We hear about some of their disagreements and annoyances, but they're largely on the same page here. Maude turns Ned on while wearing his dead grandma's PJs, and is ready to turn Homer off with some cold water pointed at his groin. Later that same season, in Take My Life Please, high school Maude ends up hitting on the popular and successful candidate Homer Simpson. This is just an alternate reality, so don't worry about any continuity issues. Also she appears in this crowd scene during modern day, so let's just forget this episode even happened. In season 21, we get a glimpse of an argument they had right before she died, about Ned always using her hand towel. Season 23 takes a slightly darker turn for Maude, portraying her as having S-E-X with the devil in the Halloween special. In Holidays of Future Past, when Ned is dating her ghost, she tells him there is no god, just an empty void. I'm not sure which of these two scenarios Ned would hate more. These later seasons liked using Maude's death as part of the general backdrop for the series, we see her as a ghost or an angel, maybe her tombstone on occasion, her head on a pike. Sometimes they'll get really meta about this new status quo. Like in Waiting for Duffman in season 26, they have the kids playing with t-shirt cannons, Homer declaring t-shirt cannons never killed anyone, and then having them hit a picture of Maude. Ned literally looks at the camera in shock. In Thanksgiving of Horror, she is the first turkey that is brutally killed by the pilgrims. Poor Maude can't catch a break. We get a couple more flashback episodes during this era. 
In The Kids Are All Fight, she goes to lunch with the Simpsons, and jerk-ass Ned won't let her use the bathroom. In Flan Canyon, the two families go on vacation to the Grand Canyon. Maude ends up judging Marge's parenting, and then comforts Todd while he has night terrors. None of these flashbacks feature Maude in a major way thus far. It's not like they were suddenly shilling the character because they got Maggie Roswell back. That is, up until the season 29 finale, Flanders Ladder. Oh boy, where to even start with this one? If you haven't seen it, you should, because it is legitimately the weirdest episode in Simpsons history. I'm not kidding. Basically, Bart pranks Lisa, and after he goes in an unrelated coma, she gets her revenge by sending bad vibes to him, causing him to be trapped in a nightmare. And that nightmare? Features a very pissed off Maude Flanders as a ghost, demanding that he help her. Now to clarify, this is all in Bart's head, so everything should be filtered through Bart's view of her. But this is an incredibly spiteful version of Maude. She wants Bart to kill Homer to avenge her death, so she can finally be at peace. Bart arranges for Homer's death by t-shirt cannon, and Maude floats away to heaven. Also, this version of Maude didn't know that Ned remarried. Also, Lisa's prank almost kills Bart. Also, we find out how many of our favorite characters end up kicking the bucket. Hey, don't look at me. I told you this episode was weird. In season 31, we return to the Flanders grieving process, as Todd suddenly forgets what his mother looked like. For the first time, Todd questions his religious views, that his god would allow such a terrible thing to happen. I'm pretty sure he would fully renounce his religion if he found out it were controlled by Fox executives. And finally, in season 32, we have Manger Things, yet another flashback episode, but finally one featuring Maud. Six years ago during Christmas, while Maud is pregnant with Todd, Homer has to stay at her house because he's fighting with Marge over some stupid contrived garbage. This story features Maud at her feistiness. She is super pregnant and not at all in the mood to deal with Homer's rude behavior and definitely doesn't want to hear Rod suddenly using the word jackass. She straight up kicks Homer out of her house. However, when Ned is temporarily away, she goes into labor. Homer returns to deliver the baby with help from YouTube tutorials. She requests Homer channel his inner Flanders to help calm her. So Homer holds her hand and says kind supporting words that Ned would say and then successfully delivers Todd Flanders. We even find out that Todd's middle name is Homer due to this event. In a vacuum, it's a very sweet moment. However, this is a unique case where I struggle to ignore the context of these two characters' relationship, especially after they did Flanders' Ladder. One moment, they're explicitly blaming Homer for her death, designing a plot around that fact, and in another, they're giving them an emotional moment together. The Simpsons loves positioning itself as a strictly episodic show, that every episode's story arc stands on its own, but I don't know if it works for Maude and Homer. She is a character that for 20 years has been defined by her death. It's one of the first things that come to mind when you think of Maude Flanders. The reason I wanted to do this video was because, in a weird way, it feels like Maude has been haunting the past 20 seasons of The Simpsons. That we witnessed the characters coming to terms with her death, as well as the writers coming to terms with their decision to kill her off. Even all these years later, there's still a desire to resolve her unfinished business. I mean, I guess it makes sense. There's something in our brains that craves resolution. From a writing perspective, you want to deal with some of those loose ends. It's just, I get the impression sometimes that everyone collectively views Maude's death as a mistake, and the show, in its limited way, is spending all these years trying to make up for it. And it's kind of strange that it's even come this far. As Reverend Lovejoy said, Maud Flanders was basically a nobody prior to her death. She had a few great jokes in the classic years, but rarely contributed to the story. In fact, Maud was probably most plot important when she was absent, either away at Bible camp or being detained overseas. I think it's nice that the show cares this much about the Flanders family to go through this much effort for such a minor character. That even though the audience didn't care that much about Maud, the characters clearly did. She got a callous, disposable death, but she wasn't a disposable character. The past 20 years wouldn't have played out this way if this were true. So while I think Maude was killed off for a bad reason, at the very least, I'm glad it brought a new level of appreciation for such a minor character. Let me know in the comments what you think of Maude Flanders and that fateful decision to kill her off. Do you still think it was a mistake, or was it a necessary evil? 
I admit, this entire video project was inspired by that recent Season 32 episode. It sort of crystallized for me how weird the situation with Maude is, and how far the character has gone. This was sort of a bonus Simpsons Histories, so please keep those suggestions coming in the comments for who I should tackle next. I'll combine these nominations with the last ones. Currently, Kearney and Lenny and Carl have been gaining a lot of ground, so let your voice be heard. As always, thanks for watching.